Did you ever go to the offices, let's say like in year three in Carolina and just say, out of curiosity, what was my grade? What grade did you give me? Um, no, so I just found out the other day what my grade was. Literally just found out at one of the pro days. Share it. I want to hear it. My pro day was I was a third round draft pick because mm -hmm. I was a hothead. If I wasn't a hothead, they said I would have been a first rounder. I said, why in the hell y'all tell me that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs>Talk to me of your view of what Quentin Johnston is, what he's where he's successful on the field, because there are certainly elements to big plays and three straight years of really, really long yards per reception on average. But maybe what you have learned, what we have learned throughout the process, that maybe he doesn't exactly play to that true X wide receiver body. He's a big body, right? Um, we know that he's a highly skilled player. And uh, he's a vertical threat down the field. Wingspan puts him at the capability of six foot nine. Amongst wide receivers, between his broad jump and his vertical jump, he it puts him in a 90 percentile. So that puts him at that freak of nature, right? And we all know these uh, these these teams they fall in love mm -hmm. with freak of nature, right? Guys that you that that you that we create on Madden. That we, you know, we go into the editing machine, and those are the type of players Quentin Johnson uh, reminds us of. And TCU did a really good job of understanding what he does well and what he doesn't. His catch, his his run after catch, is up there with some of the best. It's up there with some of these small jitterbug guys, right? The Josh Downs, some of these other guys. However, the thing that I find interesting, right? And when I have to evaluate, you see this long run? This is an outstanding long run. Helps TCU get back in the game against Michigan. We also know Michigan does not have any corners right now that we will say going in the top 10 or in the top 20 um, in the draft. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. As and some of those corners. And some of those big plays were against blitzes that didn't get home. So he was like a bunch of space. And I saw some other – uh, plays yes. in that same game where he was getting pressed uh, on a little slant route and he didn't have the same effectiveness. So going back to that Michigan game, it was shocking to me to see how many of these big yards came on just a blitz. So hold on, go back, replay that play because yeah, that this, was what I was this, talking about. So this is where this is where he went. Hold on, pause it. This is where he went from a top ten to now he is slipping out of the top. He slipped out of the top ten. Right? Mm -hmm. And his family and some folks may think I'm uber critical of them. Um, before you, you, you know, you send me a nasty gram, understand I am just getting my data and evaluating the process because this is my job. I'm not trying to throw shade. I think he's going to be a remarkable football player, but he's not going to the Pro Bowl day one. Right. Well, and on top of that, Steve, I think you can show examples that back up exactly what you're talking about. And it's mm -hmm. showing your work. It's so, not like you're pulling it out of thin air. No, I'm I, I I'm not. That let me tell you why pulling things out of thin air I don't like is because that's that's lazy reporting as an right. analyst, and that's just lazy as uh, underdog, uh, you know, representation and NFL Network, and then at the same time the Smith family household. Right? right, I'll be a hypocrite. The thing that he does not do that you'll see at times he doesn't drop his weight. The fluidity of for him. And you can say, well, he's six foot two. He's not supposed to. Yeah, but his six foot two-ness is the reason why people are infatuated with him. Right? He doesn't at times win against the press mm -hmm. for a six two guy. Here's the other part. He also is a little bit passive in attacking the ball when there's a defender there. Yeah. When you're six two, you're supposed to be well, we talk about freakiness, or we talk about that moss-like. Well, you're that big. That's why the name is Moss, because like right here, you'll see that go run that play. That's an excellent ca catching of the pass over the shoulder, tracking the ball, excellent. All over him. How tall is he? Six two and three quarters, I was told. How much is his wingspan? Six foot nine, I heard. You put your foot in the ground, you turn around. First of all, it's a 
fist fight in a phone booth. Mm -hmm. So you use your hands to swipe. You turn back, and six nine, you're jumping up. Pow! If this was basketball, and they threw that pass, or that was the rim, you wouldn't at six two do that. What would you do? Ha! Mm -hmm. You would dunk it. They posterize a guy. Yeah. Now this is excellent body and ball control. But what happens is he let, he allows the ball to fall in his hands so much that there are times where the corner will out jump him shorter sure. to get yeah. that ball. And that's where I say he comes across passive. He struggles to get he struggles against the press. He doesn't get a lot of bend. And then when he does run a route, he's telegraphing, which that means that allows the corner to get a jump on the ball. Mm -hmm. And here's the other part that's even shocking that you know, that sometimes you got to be careful because I could fall into that category that I do at times. He does a lot of the same routes. Yes. Can he improve on that? Yes. But he doesn't fight for the ball. I want to ask if he can improve on that, Steve, because coming yeah. from you, and I'll say it so you don't have to, you were, let's say, on the shorter end of, of yeah. the scale. I'm five, but, nine, three, four. But no one played bigger. Right? No one played bigger. So one, does it drive you mad when a big guy plays small? And two, can't... It doesn't, it, it, now it doesn't drive me mad. It just goes, I just check off the box and go, nope. Yeah. Right? And you just move on. Right? And that's what teams are going to do. So can that be improved, though, I guess? It, is the can, it can be improved. And is that just internally or is it coaching? You know, is it just it's, a mindset? It's, it's, a, it's both. This is not for everybody, but it is for Quentin Johnson because of how big and athletic he is. 18 contested targets last year, and he only caught eight of them. That's yeah. 44%. You can't put freak-ish athleticism and yet have below contested catches. Yeah. That generally, <laughs> that, that, that the scale of justice that's why he's dropping out of the top 10 who begin of the this this uh, pre-draft season man it was like oh this guy's top 10 he is the best in the class of all these wide receivers in his short area quickness his short area quickness is 3.9 is 3.93 and let me tell you a guy when you say 3.93 like what does that mean Man, that's the same short area quickness that Julian Elliman displayed coming out of Kent State of why um, the New England Patriots saw him as somebody who get him in the building, work with him, and he has the ability to do some, do some things that hopefully if it pans out is great, right? Short area quickness, a route running machine, technically sound, contested catches, he didn't have you got to go back though into 2021 mm -hmm. to kind of really see a skill set because he had this injury with the hamstring. His long range speed isn't there. However, you turn on the tape and he does play above his time speed. You see play after play with his lack of speed that you see play after play of him making fantastic route running. Like, just go back, go back to that Penn State understanding. He understands his leverage. He understands they're playing zone coverage. He has a linebacker out, a linebacker corner. I don't know. It might be dying. But in this, in this defense, mm -hmm. as a wide receiver, that is considered, no matter who is there, if it's a 30 or 40 or 5 or 2 or 8, whatever the number is, he's considered the 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 will or Sam linebacker he may be a safety, but he's considered if this was a run play that's his guy he yep. has to go block him. But in a pass play, he has to get by him cleanly, without messing up the timing of the play. So he gets up it into the route. He knows exactly I got to go back out, but I got to allow this slew footed guy to get out of my way. But I have to give him something and not get tied up because they're dropping out, dropping out in coverage. So he gets he gives him a little indicator step. The linebacker takes the cheese 
and stumbles on the turf. He goes inside, understands where he needs to be. Now I got to work up on this, uh, this safety. And then I still have another guy dropping. I got my wide receiver clearing out. Should have went outside, but goes inside. So that is in the wide receiver room. That's a sin. Yeah. Because you're not, and why is it a sin? You're not protecting your guys. All these lines mean something. They, they, they ha- if there's a method to the madness. Going outside, which stutters and slows down, that gets the timing that allows CJ to play eye candy with the safety. Also, side eye cor- side eye look at the corner to hold him and to be able to throw a nice, precise throw to protect your receiver from heading in that blue tent and doing that concussion evaluation. And then working back to the quarterback here. I mean, that's like third window stuff, you know? Yes. That's 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 uh, off schedule. Yep. That's uh, understanding, having a great understanding. Uh, Brian Hurtline, Brian Hurtline has done an exceptional job of coaching these wide receivers. Amazing. Yep. And the coordinator, pass game coordinator, he knows exactly the type of players that he wants. He knows the FBI, the football intelligence. And if they don't have it, they sure get it when they leave there because all those guys are good. Now, this play is bananas because he gives an indicator step again, playing the same little peon that is trying to figure out what's going on. So he says, hey, I did it to your cousin up top, but he didn't tell you. And y'all talked about it probably uh, uh, when Penn State was on offense for a brief matter of time. Um, <laughs> offense gets back out there. Corner is sitting there. This is a corner now who's playing linebacker. He's sitting there. He hops, and the corner hops. He hops with him. So when he hops with him, the corner doesn't understand he's hopping to get you to jump. And as he's jumping, his head is looking inside. So what does he do when the corner lands? The corner's already going, I got to beat him to the inside. Boom. Gets him in the outside. So now that hand's there. Use the hand to break it down. Go back outside, but here's what he does. This is the part that I love. He already knows this is going to be zone, and he's coming. He has to go be what they call be friendly. He goes back towards the line of scrimmage to minimize in case the throw so the corner doesn't jump in front of the pass and it's a pick six. So that's what you you call for a wide receiver of his caliber. You make the quarterback right. Mm -hmm. And why do you make the quarterback right? Because you chose me. And yep. by choosing me, I will protect your throw. And you know you could count on me. That's where that chemistry comes in. The chemistry in practice, right? So that corner so- sees that. He knows the hit's coming. So secure the pass. Brace for impact. thing with him, there's no wasted movement at nope. any time. Any time. One of my favorite plays from him, it was like a third and three. Got man coverage. And I think, uh, yeah, it might have been this one right here where he like runs past the sticks to create some separation and then comes back knowing he's going to come back to the ball because he's not as big as others. Uh, and he's always just open, man. Mm-hmm. There's there's the yards after the catch ability in the short area is so unique because he's not like the, the fastest dude in the world, but he always beats the second level defenders yes. because that first step, there's no like one, two, it's just catch, turn and go. And that's why I think he draws some comparisons to Keenan Allen and, He's maybe a little bit bigger, but yeah, the Keenan smoothness. Allen's a little bit, a little bit taller. I don't think yeah. Keenan Allen is as uh, lower body heavy, yeah, as, as in Jigba and his his physical tools. He understands how to use them too. See, that's one thing you talk about the difference. That's one thing he doesn't. He's not six four, but he mm-hmm. also understands how to use his physical tools and understand how how. He understands how to play football at the highest level. He has a slot. He's going to play in the slot. And now he doesn't like me saying this, and he's told me personally. Oh, yes, so he, he, has, he does want to play outside. He does want to play outside. Interesting. The, the problem with playing outside, though, in the National Football League is the corners can run with you. Yeah. And so it's speed on speed. And – he, but he's also only played – he's played 90% of his work in the slot anyway. Correct. And so that's how people have looked at him. And overall, contested catches, you ready for this? 87.5. So he's you, you move up, you know, it's five. So 
88% of the contested catches, your guy's winning. And I got to say, Steve, a decade, maybe more than that, slot receiver was kind of used as a stigma, you know? Yeah. And that wasn't a, a slot receiver back in the day. That was like, that was, that was like, you know, a slot receiver being used back in the day is what they would say about a quarterback. Man, he's a game manager. Right. You're right. Like, oh, game manager. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's our guy, Ricky Prohl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So now you have studs at that spot that are incredibly productive. I mean, we can go from Cooper Cup, who spent about 55 to 65% of his time there. And it's all different body types, too. You can go from Christian Kirk to Chris Godwin. Well, I can tell you. I'm on Ross St. Brown to Tyler Boyd. You know, like it's not even the same type of slot receiver. They're, they're, they're different types. It's just technically how they play. There's two guys right now that aren't on this list that we're going to talk that we aren't going to talk about. But the kid from Stanford, um, uh, Michael Wilson, and then the kid from, I think, Iowa State. Xavier Hutchinson? Yeah, Hutchinson. Yes, they're looking at him as slot, primarily slot guys. Big, like a power are, slot, big slot. Yes, big slot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the work, big slot. Yep. Steve, right now, like someone like Jalen Hyatt, who was in a very unique offense with oh, Tennessee. That offense is very tough, and I think that offense – is harming him. How challenging is it for him to prove to NFL teams before the draft that he could? He knows the coverages. He knows he NFL style offenses. He doesn't. It's just it's impossible for him. He's just gonna have to show it over time. <clears throat> Here's my notes: elite speed and lacks creativity in a route game. So, uh, you want to hear my comp? I would love to. I, my comp is a guy you played with, so I would love to hear yours Who first. That? And you can tell me if I'm. In outer space here. Don't don't offend one of my ex ex teammates that I like. Well, maybe we'll find out your feelings. Ted okay. Ginn. There's some Ted Ginn elements. No, he, to him. There ain't no Ted Ginn in him. I love Ted Ginn. I love Ted no, Ginn too. But it, what no, I'm, he's not a. It, it, okay, good. You can tell me I'm. I'm here's why. Because first of all, Ted Ginn was a first round draft pick. Right. And Ted Ginn showed things that I think Jalen Hyatt has not. Right. He developed those, like in terms of seeking his hips and creating actual separation okay. and breaks okay. of his routes. You're right. Ted Ginn would be – well, no, I disagree because Good. Ted Ginn was not in this offense where he was wide open all the time. True. Ted Ginn did have some contested catches. Ted Ginn did take some some press slants to the house. He didn't have 12 yards of runway every time like Hyatt does. In these- Hyatt only has 62 snaps in his whole entire collegiate career against, man, against press cover. He was either stacked or behind another receiver – or he didn't even run a route. Yeah. Right? But here's my comp, Johnny Knox. Remember him? Yeah, I do. The the Bears. Yes, sir. Until that injury, Johnny was not – it was still kind of the – the verdict was still on what kind of – what kind of guy is this? He's going to be coached to the point where it's – is going to be irritating for him. Everyone is projecting him as quote unquote, the best vertical receiver in this draft. My because it's, elite on speed. That, it's because it's, it's speed. And yeah. Steve, talk to us about what everything goes into being a vertical receiver other than just speed. Because if it was just speed, we just get the fastest guys out there and there you go. But it's so well, much, they, well, it's well, ball tracking, it's, it's route manipulation. It's all that stuff. They do want to get – because you can't teach speed. That's right. why it's, it's so hard. You can't teach speed and you can't teach height. You can teach how to catch the ball. You can teach how to track. You can't – you know, you can teach a guy how to process. You can improve a guy how to process. No matter how good of a coach you are, if he ain't hitting a full two, he just ain't hitting. It ain't in his DNA, right? You could teach him some techniques to maybe become faster a little bit, take some – Takes them a couple tenths of a seconds off, but you you don't go from four or five to four or two, not legally, right? You can do some things to make it increase, but you know you may you that it may hurt you in your later years. Steve, he's uh like 176 pounds, and I've noticed a That's bunch like of these after res- Thanksgiving, right? I've seen, <laughs> but I've seen over the last couple of years, all of, a bunch of the receivers are getting into this 185, 195. Do you think that these like young players like Jalen Hyatt early declare just barely 21 years old? Is there room for him to add 10, 15 pounds? Or is this what you're going to get and this is just his body size? And if he added weight, it would actually be a detriment because he wouldn't be as fast. Like, Is there any growth you can see just like 
physically from some of these like younger dudes? Some of these younger guys will have growth. They they generally want him 5'10", 194 pounds. He's going to gain weight. Man, I was drafted. I was 169, 172 pounds wow. when wow. I was drafted. But I also broke my neck in college, and I re- mm-hmm. and this was at the time where they said if you lift your weights too early, you stunt your growth. Hey, I'm not trying to stunt my growth. <laughs> So you have to, uh, you know, you're going to gain weight. You're going to get into a professional business yeah. because your body's going to absorb mm-hmm. these many car crashes that your body's going to have to stay up and be healthy enough to be able to shake off. The Zay Flowers conversation Josh and I have is he body size wise is like a slot wide receiver, but he plays much bigger than that. Do you think he can play in two wide receivers set on the outside, given his like just like uh, lack of like arm length, for example? Well, it, it, they call that um, catch radius. Mm-hmm. You know his lack of catch radius. Uh, you know you you tell me you want to start on you want me. Yeah, to I would love to hear your thoughts on Zay Flowers. Yeah. Yes. All right. So my key to Zay Flowers, what I think he is, he's a movable weapon. So if he's a movable weapon. It doesn't matter Mm -hmm. what his catch radius is because, one, he has speed. Can't teach that. He's a big play threat down the field. Top end speed that has to be accounted for, and you're unlikely to catch him from the behind. Right? His quickness is rare, and his his ability to sprint in any direction at the blink of an eye is tough. Right? You could put a corner – on him, and you can hope for the best. Hmm. But when he's a movable threat, you put a linebacker or a safety on him, that's how you get a defensive coordinator fired. Mm-hmm. Because just what he brings to the table and how he can run his routes, right? But hold on. Before you do that, go back. Yep. And I want to show you something. I want to show you something. When this corner up top and Zay gives him the indicator step, the corner gets so out of his lane. When he catches back up, he is two, two, three, and four steps behind behind Mm -hmm. the wide receiver to the point when the ball is thrown. On paper, you see Zay Flowers catching it over two corners, over two uh, defenders. But technically, he's only catching over one because you don't care about the dude behind you because you gave, you set him up early on. Boom. He gets him out. He's he's close to the hash. He's a watch this. He's a step in he's a step and a half in front of mm-hmm. the corner on the hash. And he's even Steven with the safety. And when you're a good wide receiver, when you even you leaving. You are leaving. Yep. And look, look at that. Look how bad the corner is. The corner is in such trail technique. The original corner, go back about to 30. The corner does what you don't supposed to do. You know what the corner does? He says, mommy. You know how I know he says, mommy? You want to know how I know he says, mommy? Because he doesn't look up in the air where the ball is. He goes, mommy, I hope the quarterback did not throw the ball. Mm-hmm. He's looking at the quarterback. Did the quarterback throw it? Mommy, he did. <laughs> and then the corner goes, let me look at Zay. How far is Zay in front of me? And as he's doing that, the corner gets even more and more out of position. Now he's damn near off the – he's in the middle of the hash marks and almost outside of the hash. So that means now him out here, he has to now one, two, three, to get back in alignment and also try to catch up in speed. So now he's in that old – you know, in the old relay races, head back – Body out of position, you're tired, and you're you're moving, and you're trying to get there, but you're so out of you such you have such bad technique that you can't do anything. And the other corner, he just says, "Look, if I don't have him catch it, we'll take the penalty." But he can't catch it, so he hits you with these landing strips like it's a like he's on an airplane. <laughs> this Go is airplane. such great stuff. And Steve, what I loved about this is they obviously, and I think they rolled right before the snap into like this cover three look yeah. almost. But then you have to run a corner post when it's basically a double team and he makes both loose. Yes, because now what does he do? He he sets up the first defender. 
Right. Now his real work is, is the is, middle guy. Is the is the safety. Correct. Right. Who's a panicker. He has no oh my oh wow. And see, he just jumps up mm-hmm. like hopefully I could get it. And yeah. then the corner who's his original assignment, he's over here. If you're gonna do that, get that man a Nikon, get him a picture, because that's a hell of a picture. Mm-hmm. Chee, chee, chee. That is a great picture right there because he ain't participating in a football game at this moment at all. You know, the funny thing about watching Zay Flowers is they certainly didn't set him up to fail. But what I wish they did more often mm-hmm. was give him those shorter to intermediate routes. No, and a, no, you're, you're glad they didn't because mm-hmm. to me, this quarterback, both that he played with, too often turned down these 10 to 15 I yards like, when he was open. Good, Oh, interesting. Why? Because we wouldn't be talking about him as a first round draft pick. We'd be saying that he's a slot receiver and he's yeah. a second or third round pick like a Josh Downs. What you're saying is you love yes. that we were able to see things that people just looking at Zay Flowers frame didn't think he could do because yes. we know he can do the rest already in terms because, of the easy stuff. Yes, because you naturally, like you guys said, his catch radius. Well, he's a little bit too small. So, you know, what we call jitterbugs. In this process, how teams and what people say and think about you, that's the perception of it becomes reality. The perception of he's only this. And so you get what we call typecast. And typecast means you come in, they come in with a preconceived notion of what you cannot do. And that's not good. Right. When you say, hey, I want to prove that I can play and, and I'm using only myself as an example. I was typecast as a punt returner. Oh, yeah. And so th- it took a little bit longer and caused impatience at my at, for me sometimes because it was like I had to prove because of my height that I could run routes. But the other guys are typical. They didn't have to prove that they couldn't run. They couldn't put. Like you never hear a big, you never hear somebody saying, "Man, that guy's too big. He can't play in the slot, and we're not gonna give him any opportunity." A big right. guy, he gets every opportunity. A little yeah. guy's like, "Nope, you're just playing in the slot, and you gotta earn the trust of the coaching staff that you can play outside." I'm sure people think that he's gonna that he played slot receiver in college, which is not yeah. true. He was in isolation more yeah. than anybody else. These top six wide receivers, he was in isolation more than any of them. So I, I, I'm with you. I think he's going to get a chance to go prove that he can do that again in the college. In worst case, like you said, worst case, he is a jitterbug underneath guy that can take some of these drag routes and bust a corner. But I, I don't, I'm with you. We can't typecast him as a slot receiver only right now because he's in college. He wasn't at all. Exactly. And then here's what we go back. Big playability, either through rack or as a vertical threat down the field. He is his releases and his ability uh, to consistently win. See, in his releases, route running, clean footwork, right? His big playability. This is like a tiny little detail, Steve. Uh-oh. But it stood out to me when watching JSN versus Save Flowers, where JSN, when he catches it, almost rolls away from the defender in like one movement, momentum a little bit, whereas Zay Flowers loves oh. to square up to the yes. defender. Yes. Is... is is that just preference? Because you I, preference. you always loved to square up to defenders, yes. to deliver that stiff arm to get by him. Like he, Zay almost turns into a ball carrier in those situations versus, again, Jason's slightly different in his rack. That's just, that's, just, that's just preference, right? Sometimes in situations, I always love to get square up because that also, so you see it as square up. You know what I look at it as? Time I to fight? To, no, I would look at it because it, actually gives me an understanding because I always was uh, working my peripheral Got it. to know where the hits are coming. So you wouldn't get a hit, a clean hit on me because the less and less high impact allows yeah. me to stay healthier. Mm-hmm. And I can at times be able to set up where I can give the hit instead of receiving the hit. Does that make sense? It does. It totally yeah. does. I mean, you can't see shit when you're back your helmets to the rest of the defense. Don't tell my kids that, though. Because <laughs> dad has eyes behind the back of his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Jordan Addison because yeah. 
this is one of those players who kind of has played everywhere. You know, he did play the slot. He did play outside for Pitt as well. He's been moved around. Another one of these weird frames, five foot 11, 173 mean, pounds. What you mean? That's a weird frame. 173. Here's a number for you since you've been throwing hold, numbers hold on, at hold, us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You over here with your YMCA bad body talking <laughs> about weird frame. What, what are you talking That's about weird to do, frame? Steve. <laughs> he doesn't have a weird frame. Have this you not is seen that boy play? I know, no, I, I really like Jordan Addison, and I actually think the more you watch the rest of this receiver class, I like Jordan Addison even more when going back to him. This guys doing a lot of footwork. Um, the game has changed, where you know they have nutritionists on the college staffs now, so it's just a little different. They've been working out a ton. They want to be leaner. They want to look the part. Uh, so, and then they're still growing in their body as well. Okay, what do you like about Jordan Addison? Point blank. Uh, I, again, another highly skilled player. Um, he's a plug and play yesterday. He could play. The thing though, that I believe, I think USC hurt him. Mm. That's his Trojans. That's Hayden's Trojans, by the way. I agree with this take. Okay. He changed I, his profile. Yeah. They changed it. He didn't change it. And, right, that, right, right. and I think they tried to blame him as well. They did. They did not do him. I think they did him a disservice. I thought he looked more explosive. He looked like a better all-around wide receiver when he was at Penn at, uh, 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 with uh, Kenny um, Pickett. Pickett. Yep. I don't think they did they did him well, but he is such a good player. Just right there, so watch how he gives the indicator step. Right, he's letting that receiver know. Look, that receiver from Stanford is saying, "I can't get beat outside. I can't get beat outside." So he gives him everything to believe. I'm going to beat you outside. Safety thinks so too. Quarterback does it. This is a good. Look at that arm. This, the safety. this is a good. Oh, well, you're noticing, huh? Yeah. See, you didn't learn this when you had Josh McCown on there. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's a quick a, learner, Steve. Yeah. But look at the safety. The safety is also looking at the deep over. So you give him where he does want to go. Do, this court, do not get beat outside because possibly when we watch this play, Th the defense said, hey, outside, deep deep out, deep corner, come back. They utilize really good coordinators, utilize what, what were we successful a couple weeks prior, and how do, we, how do we add on to that? So we ran corner, corner. Now we're going to hit them with a corner post. So he gives them all that indicator step, goes outside. He doesn't just – what he doesn't lean – like we in a car and going too fast around a corner. He gives an indicator step, but his shoulders and body is saying, I'm only going here. And what can get you in trouble is if you get too wide out your base, when you go back over, you allow the corner to spin. And a corner uses that spin to recover. But if the, if the precision route running of the receiver is not there, then that's where it gets, that's where it gets wonky. And he does that, gives an indicator step, and then takes the post. Then he takes the uh, post. Boom. Corner doesn't have a change. He's a true number one wide receiver. He has, out of everyone, between him and JSN, as route running, Addison has one of the highest ceilings among wide receivers in this draft due to his blend of route running chops and his all-around athleticism. He is a three-level route runner, intermediate, totally agree. deep, and short flexibility and footwork. And the way he could get in and out of his breaks is so natural. He uses his leverage, and he manipulates the defensive back consistently over and over again. And he has, he has the highest ceiling, man. All these traits don't show up in the combine either. So everybody, at least on the fantasy circles, was panicking because – a small guy that's only running four, four, nine, everyone panics. But like you said, that fluidity, that bend, that ball tracking, I would guess that his understanding of coverages is higher than most people in this class. He just plays with instincts and he's a no wasted movement guy as well. And you're not going to see any of that in the comp. I wanted to hit on one thing that, that you said, we see this term route runner all the time. What specifically are you looking for? Is it just the releases at the line of scrimmage? Is it ability to sink hips? Is it head movement? Is it just tape study? Or is this just like natural instincts? Like, I think it's like uh, we just throw out all term. good good route runner stuff. So, but there's so layers that, to it, right? Okay, so all those words you said, circle them. Mm -hmm. 
Not, there's when you're a good route runner, you can't just do one because there's not one just route. Right. You need fluid hips to run a comeback. You need fluid hips to to win on a press coverage slant. You need good hips like in this route to run a post to give the indicator to run a post and to be able to sell sell the post to kill him on the post corner. Mm-hmm. Right. So the three levels deep intermediate and short and he has the explosiveness and the quickness and the athleticism and the flexibility and the ball tracking that sets him apart from some of these guys now is he better than zay flowers on a head-to-head sprinting no but there's no there's not a zay flowers a zay flowers b is zay flowers and there's no addison jordan addison a or b you add more to his arsenal you put more tools in his tool belt and the ones he already comes into the job with, now you teach them how to sharpen them. I know right. everyone out there has already gone over to cut to it and checked out all these wide receiver, even cornerback profiles. You're loving it. You oh, love, love doing it. that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Tell me. If I can go back in time now and I could be – just go back over, I wouldn't change anything. It would be too hard. <laughs> it worked out all right for you. <laughs> I thought about. I was like, ah, I'd be too much energy. I need to. Ex- no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to hang out with Coley once a week. You know, if you went back and changed anything. I know he's he's a great dude too. Love that, Steve. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it, bud. Appreciate it.